on this episode, brain power. Who would have thought? I, why is this so complicated? Of course, in hindsight, everything is easy. Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lasers Academy. Welcome to episode 70 of the Advanced Schmap Tutorial. Man, it feels like the end times here because we are just getting ready to actually start, you know, making the game, making the level in our game. Some uh, last finishing touches that we want to maybe add. <clears throat> On the last episode, we created autosave for the schedule editor. <clears throat> Today, I wanted to, first of all, bring the joy of the autosave to all the other editors that we have. And this will be some menial task, which is going to copy over the code that we had in the schedule editor to all the other editors. Um, I'm, not, I'm going to speed up this part a little bit because you kind of already saw how this works and this is not like crazy uh, code stuff. But I will point out uh, all the places where we are setting the data to dirty, where we're marking the data as, as something that's been changed. So the autosave then uh, triggers off of, of that, okay? So let's go. So the first one that we're gonna uh, copy over, uh, it's gonna probably gonna be brain edit. All right, so I've added all the code that displays the dirties kind of stuff. And then let's see, enter brain is I think where a lot of stuff is happening. Um, so I think here when we're deleting the brain, absolutely here we also want to um, set this to dirty. Um, when here, where we are um, setting, changing about something about the data, we also want to, um, we have to set it to true. <laughs> set the dirty to true. Were we editing the metadata? Mm. Yeah, let's set the dirty to true here as well. So this is where we're editing, by the way, this is where we're editing the command entry. Uh, yeah, let's mm, mm, let's set it let, like dirty to true here because this is where we're deleting the brain, but this is where we're uh, setting the brain. So yeah, we want to dirty to be true here, not just inside this if statement. And then here is where we, here is also when we want to set it to, to, to dirty to true. Mm, this is if, the, if what we're typing in is empty. Um, so that's where we're setting to the true. This is also when we're setting to the true. And then here, I think that's okay. I think this is okay. The, the f good thing about setting dirty to true is that you can have, so, have some misses. It's fine. It's fine. Maybe the maybe autosave is not going to be as reliable, but but it's, it's, if it's reliable enough, it's, it's good enough. Uh, I also wanted to maybe add a. So we have enter table. Um, do we have a do button? We don't have a do button. So then in update brain here, where we doing the stuff here. So when we editing stuff. Uh, this is where we're changing things to uh, type. This is where we're creating a new line. This that that's where we definitely want to set it to dirty to true. And this is where we're entering the setup menu. Uh, and here's where we're creating a new brain. Also something that we want to set to uh, where we want to set dirty to true. Okay, let's try that. So we created a new entry. We should have a yep auto save. Uh, we're changing the weight to one. Yep, autosave, we delete it, autosave, delete this, autosave, cool, uh, let's create a new brain. Yep, autosave, and then let's delete everything from that brain, brain deleted, autosave, cool, cool, cool. This seems to be working. Let us move on to, um, which one is next, a pattern editor. Okay, so in a pattern editor, this is kind of a bit simpler here, I think. Um, let's just like every time we enter something, we're just gonna set um, dirty equals true. Yeah. All right, so every time we change something about the data, we set the dirty to true. And then an update function, um, 
uh, let, this is where we are doing all those uh, buttons here. Um, so let us do like a dirty true when we create a new pattern, or let us set dirty to true and delete a pattern. And this is where we're adding, uh, going to pad edit. This is this is really simple. Let's try that. Uh, right. So let us create a new pattern just 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 to test it. Saving. Let us delete this pattern. Saving. Uh, let us change something about the pattern. Saving and let us set it to zero again. Saving. Cool. So this works as well. I'm going to save and then let us move on to, yeah, any enemy editor. Right, so this one is very bare bones, basically. We only really have like this. We're adding new line, adding new cell, and then here is like this edit um, function. Let's, let's go dirty equals true here when we're adding a new line. Or let's set it here as well. We're new, um, creating a new cell. And then here after we're typing, uh, here's where we're putting the data into the cell, I think. Now here's where we're deleting the cell. Oh yeah, here's where we're deleting the cell. And here's where we're putting the data into the cell. Okay, so let us let us put it in here. Uh, this is a very bare bones editor. So here's where we created a new thing. It was saved, deleting this thing. It was not saved. Um, <clears throat> I think it was because we have a return here. Let's do a return dirty equals true here. Uh, so, huh, see? Okay, saving. Uh, can I delete this? I can. It's saved, which is not good. Let's just bring it back. 30. Okay, good. Easy. All right, so let us now do log the animation editor. Oh, and a sprite editor. We also need to do the sprite editor. Let's do the sprite editor. Alright, so now uh, we added these things. Uh, let us do um, dirty equals true. Um, so this is this function called enter edit. This is kind of like the main function where we're editing values. Um, this is, um, let's just do it. I don't know. This is when we're changing the name of things, I think. Yeah, that's good. Um, this is the table that we don't have to edit here because the table view is not going to have an autosave. Um, now go to the update function here. Uh, and let's see what happens here. So this is update edit. So this is the, wait, this, there's edit and list, right? This is the list view. I don't think there's lots of editing happening in the list view. Is this there? Yeah, there is. We can edit, create, create, create a new line, right? So no, wait, wait, is that tape? No, no, that, that's correct, that's correct. So we're gonna, when we create a new uh, 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 sprite, we're gonna set dirty to true. Uh, and then we're gonna go up here to, um, this is update edit. And then here is where we're triggering all sorts of functions. For example, here's where we're entering a value, but that's where we start entering the value, not where we end it, that we already did that. Um, here's also where we're editing a, something. Um, here's where we're entering the name. Here's where we're deleting a sprite. And that's where we definitely want to add a dirty equals true. Let's, let's see if we can change things around. So let's scroll all the way down. Let's create a new sprite. It exported, but it wasn't what we wanted. What, that's weird. Ah, we forgot here. Oh, okay. Let's try this again. So we have this Creating new sprite there and deleting this sprite. Yep, that works. Deleting this sprite. Yep, that worked. And then when we go in here and say set it to eight, it auto saves perfect. Back to seven. That works. Right, so let's do any edit. And then we I think we have all of our editors finished. Yep. 
Yeah, okay, so any edit here for me is kind of like very similar to the previous line here. Um, we're gonna have dirty when we create a new line. Uh, we're gonna have the dirty when we create a new cell. And then here, after after we typed stuff in, it should be here, right? Ended up UPD type, right. So here, uh, we're gonna set um, dirty to true, where we deleted a cell, and then here as well. Basically, every time we're returning to the table view, to this view, then we also want to basically set dirty to true. Um, all right, so let's create a new line. Not create a new line. Let's delete this new line. I deleted this new line. Let's create a new. Let's change some values. Yep. And let's add a new value. Cool. This works. Easy. Now this was a bit of a kerfuffle. I had to like open up all those editors and edit them one by one. That's a lot of work. This could have been done much easier. And we could have made our lives easier in two ways. First of all, we could have just like did like a replacement, like find and replace in all files. Um, this would have been definitely much easier. I did choose not to do this because I kind of like to open up the different editors and might be some slight differences between the different editors. And I want to make sure that I didn't just like, uh, that it didn't break something, right? And I had to do the dirty insertions um, anyway, so that's why I did it per hand. I think that's that's okay. There's not too many editors. The other way in which we could have made our life so much easier is if our original template, if that had autosave already built in, that's something that we're gonna learn for the future. So whenever I'm gonna make a game in the future, and I'm gonna create maybe use the, uh, the temp these editors as a template, I will make sure that autosave features are already built in from scratch. Live and learn, live and learn. All right, so this is um, finished. Now let us go um, continue. I have a whole list of things that I want to fix. Let's go to sprite edit. All right, so we have autosave. There is a feature here that I want to maybe fix. This is like the scrolling after exit, right? Um, so just to demonstrate the problem, so let's let's scroll down, let's scroll all the way down to some kind of like thing. We're gonna enter, we make some changes, we get out, and then there's like this ugly scroll happening. I don't want that. Um, so let's do a, go with the update function, uh, update edit. This is edit, but uh, this is the list view. This is what I wanted to. This is where we are in this list view. So here we're going to the edit um, sprite. Um, let's call this like old. Scroll equals scroll x. Mm. And then we and when we end exit this view, so this is this view here. This is where we're going back. Scroll x equals old scroll. I hope it's X. Is, is it X or Y? Let's see. No, it's not X. It's it's Y. Let's try that. Yes. So good. Ah, feels so much better. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so I wanted to add uh, another function here. I think I had it here. Um, nudge values, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to maybe add the ability to nudge values. So there's sometimes situations like, it's a bit cumbersome, you know, when we are, just little little tweak here. So it's a bit cumbersome. I just want to increase it by one, right? So I have to get in there, go like this, and then get, and just like a bunch of button presses that I need to press in order to just nudge it a little bit. Um, so it would be nice if when we are in this mode, we can go left and right to, to move the values left and right. Uh, let's try that. Uh, so, so update edit here. Okay. Uh, so if we if cur y, then yeah, I basically only want to do this in this area and I don't want to, hmm, I'm not sure about these, but definitely in the first one, two, three, four, five, six, in the first six, I want to do this. Um, so here in the else function, if cur x is a uh, cur cur y is smaller equals seven, I think. And then if we're, going, if we're moving left and right. Uh, 
Um, so here I where I want I want to do the nudging. Not <laughs> not the. Okay, so uh, how are we doing to the nudging? How does that even work? Um, yeah, just basically take this data and just add or subtract one, right? Uh, yeah, let's just get this. Mm -hmm. uh, data, my menu, uh, then minus equal one. It's a bit, it's a bit chaotic, but you know what? It is a bit of a hack, but we are definitely at the hack stage of things. Let's try that. Easy. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> I should have done this way just ago. This is so good. Okay, um, I um, can't do that with effects, but maybe that's okay. I don't want to be changing effects, nudge effects. I just want to re-nudge the X and Y and width and height values. I want to be able to nudge those a bit more easy. Good, let's save this. Oh, by the way, if we do that, we definitely want to set dirty to true and false. Uh, not to, just a true. Okay, so this is done. We've done the nudging. Um, should we do a copy function? It's not necessary to do this now, but since I'm here anyway, right? And I know how to do this. Like there's this delete button. I'm just gonna add a copy button. Let's try that. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Or duplicate, let's call this duplicate. So first of all, in the UI, um, here's where I'll be adding delete. I just want to add duplicate. And then, or copy. Let's, go, let's call it copy. Let's call it copy spur. Uh, the Y position is going to be, this is, uh, 10, this is 11. Let's see if this works even. Yep, there is, oh, I cannot actually select this, okay. Uh, update function, um, and this is equals or greater than 11. Uh, this is moving up and down, menu plus two. Let's try that. Ooh, that doesn't work. Mm, no, this should work. Let's try this again. Oh yeah, it works now. Okay. Good, so we now have the copy and delete. Uh, the positioning of the copy and delete is not quite right. Uh, I want this to be six. So there's a bit of a gap between copy and delete. Okay, this is good. Right, I'm um, gonna save this and then um, here where we are triggering, this is del spur, this is where we're deleting this, this thing. Uh, we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna call this uh, copy spur, right? So if we're triggering the copy spur button, then. Um, yeah, we definitely want to return to the list view, I think that's a, that's a good idea. Cell spur equals um, hashtag data. So we want to definitely select the, the, the last um, sprite because the new copy should be definitely inserted at the end of the of the list. I think that's that makes sense to me. Um, okay, okay. Definitely dirty. Okay, so let us now do a copy. Do we have the copy function for this? So let's go like new uh, local new spur equals, um, do we have this tool to copy uh, objects? We don't, let's bring it over. All right, so this is gonna be a copy list as the function that will just copy an object basically. Uh, and we're gonna go copy list data, square brackets, 
uh, Salisbury. We basically copy our um, this this um, we're going to copy make a copy of our current uh, sprite and we're going to put put it at the end of the uh, of our data. We're going to go data <clears throat> or add data new spur. We could do this in one line, but let's do it just like a two step process here. Okay. Hmm. I forgot one more thing. Oh, we might actually, oh yeah, the metadata also we will need to copy over, right? Um, new met, meta, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add to the metadata the new met okay uh, dirty equals true let's try that let's see if this works so let's let's say let's say we have to ship one here let's get get in here let's make it copy and this should create a copy of that ship is that the same thing yeah it's the same thing basically yeah we created now a copy of that ship in here and we can also delete it good let us save this. This is this is good stuff. This is good. We are getting <laughs> we're getting so much work done. Uh, this is cool. Now the only thing left here is the direct um, sprite map selection, which we're not going to do today. That's kind of like an advanced feature. That's okay to do that later on. All right. So now we are back in a couch map. If you remember, this is what it looks like. Ah, explosions. Uh, there is a thing here that, that I wanted to fix. Um, better on-screen function. Um, so this is a bit of a, um, I want, there's a, this is a new topic a little bit. So um, we have like this, um, we want to make sure that enemies that leave the screen are deleted. This is the, 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 the goal. Enemies that leave the screen are deleted. That's, that's what we want to do. But enemies that uh, are not on the screen yet, shouldn't be deleted. Like they, we should wait until an enemy enters the screen and then the enemy does something and only delete an enemy after they already entered the screen. So we need to wait a little bit. The enemy has to enter the screen and only we're only going to delete them after they entered the screen and left the screen already. Um, because some of the enemies will spawn off screen and if we delete them already when they're off screen, then they never enter in the first place. Uh, let me see where we're doing this right now, how we're doing this right now, and let us think about how we're going to do this later on. Um, yeah, we have this on-screen function here. Okay, yeah, we're not, just not doing that. <laughs> we just, they, they always exist. What about the on-screen here? Okay, so we have like this awkward uh, on-screen function here. Uh, yeah, that is kind of like doing the things manually, but you know, it's like 38 tokens. <clears throat> and it's not good. It's still not good because it doesn't take, take into account that enemies have to be on the screen first. Okay, so here's a two-step process. There's going to be a two-step process. We gonna we need a function that checks if the enemy is on the screen. If the enemy is on the screen, then we uh, flag the enemy as being on the screen. If it's if it's on the screen, then everything is peachy. Um, if the enemy has been already flagged as being on the screen, and at some point he's no longer flagged as being on the screen, then we remove the enemy again. So uh, we kind of have to remember if their enemy has been on the screen previously, and then if they have been on the screen previously and they're no longer on the screen, then we delete them. Jeez, I, why is this so complicated? Um, uh, so yeah, we have this on, we're gonna reuse this bad on-screen function for now, and we're then gonna do a better one uh, later on. Um, so if, Okay, let's let's do like a let me let me find the code while writing the code. So if e dot staged, yeah, staged means that if the enemy has entered or previously entered the stage, and hmm, let's just do uh, always a local OSC, OSCR equals on screen, right? If that's if that's happened. So if the enemy is on the screen, uh, we're saving the, if the enemy is on the screen or not, we're saving this in, in a variable. If staged and not OSCR, then this is where we're deleting it. 
else if OSCR and not be staged, then be staged equals true. Uh, we also could do like something like else stage equals OSCR, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's that's that makes sense to me. And then we're gonna do the collision detection with the bullets only if the enemy has been on the screen before. So if uh, e dot staged, then do bull Q. And here is where we're deleting them. Is what I'm thinking. Okay, uh, I want to uh, in a debug function. Oops. Ah. Yeah, uh, we're writing the number of enemies. I don't want to. Yeah, let's try. The second number in the debug is the number of enemies. Whoa. Okay. Okay, enemies are leaving the screen. One enemy. Zero enemies. One enemy. Zero enemies. So this worked. Um, the enemies are certainly leaving the screen, so that's good. Um, but I want this uh, this on-screen function. I wanted to tweak this a little bit. I wanted to use the collision function that we already have. Let me see how the collision function works. So we have to, actually two. We have the old one and we have this new one, right? The call two. Oh man, we, some of the stuff needs to be deleted, right? Um, do we actually need the call function? Are we actually doing the call somewhere? No, we don't. We, let's delete the old one. Let's just see if this works even. Okay, good. Um, so when we're doing collisions, we're actually uh, doing the collisions against two objects, right? Yeah. Um, so, so what I want to do here is a bit crazy. We're probably not, not going to have the on-screen on function later on. Where do we even use the on-screen function? Do we use this for bullets as well? No, we just use it for for the for the enemies. We want to use it for bullets later as well. So we're just going to do a return um, like this not uh -huh. because um, what we're going to do now is we're going to collide the object that we're trying to find out if it's on the screen we're going to collide it with an object that we created that is just going to be the screen you're just going to create a collision box for the screen <laughs> logical um so let's go like uh, screen. Do we do we have screen? Are we using screen somewhere? No. I'm just gonna use a screen uh, equals this. Call equals, um, and then we have to create a collision sprite in here, right? Basically. Uh, so it's like this is these are useless. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so collision is zero zero. Um, then the width is gonna be 128 plus 16, right? I think it's 128 plus 16, and the height is gonna be 128. Um on the right, and then we also want to make sure that x is equals zero, y is equals zero, like this. Um, and then the offset is zero, zero, that's okay. Uh, like this. Let's try that. So we're colliding this object with the screen. Something didn't quite work. Ah, uh, right. We need a sprite in our sprite function for that. Because we have to, okay. So the problem is the we can actually cannot actually do this. We would have to create a big sprite in our sprite 
uh, editor. And I wonder if it would be make maybe make more sense to just like hard code it. Let's try that. So let's say like if OB doesn't exist, um, I'm gonna go like if OB then <coughs> else. And in this case, um, ob.x. Yeah, and then I'm going to create the our ob uh, x equals zero, y equals zero. So we're going to create like a little dummy object just to do continue doing the math. <clears throat> and then with height, an offset, I'm just gonna set to our values. Don't need to do an unpacking here, we're just gonna dump the values right, right, right away in here. So it's like 128 plus 16. I'm too lazy to, <laughs> to calculate. Lazy devs, right? It's, that's, the, that's the name. Um, yeah. Like this. Um, maybe, hmm. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. Maybe maybe that just works. <clears throat> and then we don't have to do the collision with the screen anymore. We just like do something like this. Mm. Oh, is it because the local is now? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, because the local definitions here only exist inside this scope, so they can no longer be accessed from the outside. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's just like do it like this. <clears throat> Let's just copy this entire thing out. Ah, oh, but it's also going to be local. Oh, this is getting messier by the second. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> it's 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 messy. It's a messy situation. It's there's. Mm, let's let's try to do something like this. So we're gonna leave these as they are, and we're gonna do something like a uh, local SPRA equals this SPRA um, if OB then uh, S hmm. local SPR B equals nil if OB then SPR B equals this else um, we're gonna get this out here um, we're gonna put it in here so we have like this SPRB value which kind of says which sprite we're colliding with so if there a, a OB exists that's okay but if OB doesn't exist then we're gonna go OB equals uh, or local OB no we cannot do OK hmm. uh, let's go let's go SPRB man I, this is really awkward let's see if we can do this um, let's copy this over OB equals X equals zero, Y equals zero. Does, is that is that does that work? Oh wait, that's uh, SPRB. Okay, that works. But they never get deleted. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I had to take a small break. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I it's it's a I'm shaved, so it's a different day now, right? <laughs> I skipped to a different day, but it, it gave me some time to think about the problem. And I think we're thinking too complicated here. This is bad. This is like 33 tokens. Like this is this is not good because mm, see. Uh, we're not saving anything doing something like this. So let us remove this. I want to uh, I want to uh, 
uh, keep to that original um, idea, though, that I want to reuse the collision detection to find out if something's on a screen or not. We're just going to uh, go about it a little bit differently. So <clears throat> the way we're doing things right now, let me, let, by the way, let me undo this real quick. Um, the way we're doing this right now is our collision detection data is a number that is referencing the um, my SPR array, right? Like we're getting, we're having a number, we're getting that number. That is the index of the sprite that will be working for the collision data. Um, that makes it very difficult for us to inject like a custom collision detection thing that is not somewhere in the in the my SPR array. It's something that we did here, right? When we just like create handcrafted a collision um, data. So in order to pull this off, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is maybe a bit crazy, uh, but in order to pull this off, what we, we, we want to save in this call property, we don't want to save the number of the collision uh, object. We actually want to save a reference to the collision object. And that allows us later to reference either objects from the MSPR array, or we can inject our own objects in there. And uh, this will allow us to use the call uh, function as it is for all sorts of collisions. I mean, probably it's going to be just like this one special collision, the screen collision. But uh, let's rewrite this like this. I think that's that might be a good choice. So this means that we can just get rid of this again. <laughs> and uh, here, where we're unpacking stuff, uh, we're just going to unpack we're just going to un unpack the actual object that we have in there. OA on OB, like this. And then, um, right, so now we have to change all of the code. <laughs> Sadly, all of the code that refers to collisions, we have to change it so it's not just like a number, but actually reference to the thing. And we might lose some tokens in the process because every time we're assigning something to that collision property, we're not just assigning a number, we actually have to actually grab something from the, the array and that's, that takes a few tokens. But I think in the end it's going to be a wash, broadly speaking. Uh, let us just look for all of the call equals uh, situations. Do we have, we have no call equals situations? Wow. Do we have any call situations? Well, we have this one. <clears throat> this is this is debugging stuff, the collision debugging stuff, but we don't doing we're not doing that anyway right now. We have to probably rewrite this uh, if you want to. Okay, um, then how about just call equals? Let's just look for all call call equals situations. There we go. So for example, here uh, we need to go uh, my SPR square brackets and five. See. And then here again, my SPR. And this takes a, this is some some tokens, right? This is this is three tokens, uh, and the other one was one token. So just like two tokens every time we find one of those. Um, my SPR. A bit unpleasant. Okay. But that should be it. It's just like those three situations. Here is where we're creating the enemies. Here is where we're creating the shots where we're shooting. And here is where we're creating the, the bullets. That's the three kind of collision uh, situations that we have. Now here we have the screen. Uh, we're going to keep this bad boy around. I think this is good. And then when we do uh, on screen, now the thing is we might not even need the on screen function. We have like this on screen function and that gives us, gets us to this on screen thing, but it's just like a collision detection now. So we can just remove the on screen, on the screen. And then instead, we're just gonna do a call, a collision to between the object and the screen, right? The screen object that we created, like this, this fake screen object here. <laughs> it's not fake, it's real, but. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> like this. <clears throat> so if we collide it with a screen, uh, yeah, okay, let's 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 try that. Oh, I mean, you might need an FX. We might need an FX, right? So it's like, um, yeah, this offset and FX. Let's let's try that. Nope. Something went wrong. Something somewhere went wrong. First of all, let us look. Um, on screen, 
uh, no, let's um, call two. Let's look where we actually what, what we're actually colliding. What's the problem with the collision? Uh, how about we, um, we we make it like this, false, and then quote this out. Maybe the screen is just a problem. It's not. Uh, it's an update 60. Mm -hmm. In interestingly, OA is the problem. OA is the problem. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 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 look what what problems we have with, with call. Um, this is debugging my SPR in five. Okay. Okay. This is not my SPR twenty nine. Yes, my SPR it doesn't matter. Ah, there we go. Ah, the player sprite. That's right. The player sprite also had a collision thing. Uh, my SPR twenty eight. Like this, just yes. Now it works. Okay, let's let's now look for the call two where we actually checking if something is leaving the screen. Um, now we bring it back. So you see, we, uh, I'm looking. It's a, it's a bit loud. It's loud in my ears, but it's not loud in your ears. I checked. I checked the recording. So I'm gonna t t tone down my vel volume. So you see, um, the second number in our debug, it goes down to zero now, right? Now it's the one, so we have one enemy, and now it goes down to zero. Now one, back to zero. So this works, basically. Um, I wanted to maybe add one more thing, and that is... I, uh, let's go to the screen definition here. Let's do 128 plus 16. <laughs> This is this is not correct, right? I, I cannot do it. My I could do it in my head, but why should I? It's 144. <laughs> and then also, let's do it like a split. Let's, let's see if this even if, if it helps if we do the split. So this line is nine tokens, and then if we do a split, Then it is five tokens. Damn, four tokens saved. That's right, baby. Ah. Right, so now this, this works. Let me uh, make sure that, for example, this also works with bullets. So uh, let's get this bad boy out. Uh, do bulls. Um, right, so here's where we're checking the bullets left the screen. Now we can instead do if call to um, s screen if not called call to s screen if the bullets are not collided with the screen then we're deleting them let's see if that works ah. oh wait wait i think mm. Uh, what, what, what do are we showing the bullets somewhere? Let's let's look debug. Yeah, we're showing them here, and it's not looking great. There's multiple doubles. Oh, 
I had two copies of the Dubuls function and one was overwriting the other one. I was going insane. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Oh wow. What a what a that 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 was amazing. That was an amazing bug. I love it. Uh, okay, so if not, uh, call bl, b, bl screen then del mm, Okay, let's try that. Uh, a call to. Yeah. Seems like. Yeah, they're going up to zero. Okay, good. <laughs> Watch out, guys. You might have two copies of the same function, and Pico will not tell you. Mm, okay, we can delete the debugging stuff now. That's good. Um, there is a bit of a problem now. Uh, we're doing collision detection. When we're checking something is on a screen, we're doing collision detection with the screen and the collision box of that object. And depending on the object, sometimes, you know, the collision box is smaller than the sprites, so we might see some pop in on some of the sprites. Um, we're gonna pay attention if this uh, this is visible, this is really prominent. If it's prominent, we're gonna take care of it. Um, the solution would be, I think, just to make the um, screen collision box just slightly bigger. So we start um, drawing the objects a little bit earlier before they, they pop in. <sighs> but for now, let us wrap up this tumultuous episode. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I think we're done with uh, with the kind of like the, the bug fixing and the, the prep work. I think the next episode we're gonna jump into creating the actual level. But for now, I'm gonna talk about the things I talk about at the end of each episode, which is, for example, I'm gonna give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to all the people supporting me on coffee.com. Thank you so much for your support. This means a lot to me. And also, I will read out a question uh, from one of the viewers. Uh, this is from the G zero one two four on episode. 27 and they wrote uh, for the few who see this you can also make strings using single quotes in which case you can use double quotes inside of the string or vice versa although you can't use single quotes without escaping them uh, if you for some reason despite backslashes you can use this kind of method instead I mean, only the cards should need to read that data, so it doesn't really matter which one it uses. And besides, you could also use that as a marker uh, that, hey, this code was auto-generated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, it kind of slipped my mind because I, I'm not used to using the single quotes in Pico 8, but yeah, in Pico 8, you can, like, if you just look real quick, you can do, this is a quote, this is a text, right? And you can also use the single quotes for text. Does that even, oh my gosh, my keyboard. Right, like this, right? Both of these are quotes, and so if you have like the single quotes, then inside the single qu quotes, um, you can use um, you can use double quotes, and then um, you can use quotes kind of as, as as a text that way, and vice versa as well. So this is a good way of creating this kind of stuff without using the escape. We had like the backslash escape escaping quotes. So you can use the quote as a text and not as, as part of the co uh, code. Um, I used this a lot back in the days when I was doing like, a lot of web development stuff because in web development you quite often like P PHP and stuff like that. You have to generate HTML code and HTML code has a lot of quotes. And that was like a very quick and easy way to deal with that. Um, just didn't occur to me to use that in Pico 8. Good suggestion. Yes, yes, yes. And finally, it is time. Stop faffing around, we're gonna make the game, or at least a test of our game. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.